Hello and welcome to this session. I hope you have watched the earlier session and we now have a basic understanding on what is Kubernetes. So Kubernetes is a container orchestration engine that manages containerized apps and takes care of the processes of deploying, scheduling, scaling, load balancing, etc. Also by now you should have a clear distinction on what is a container tool or a container platform and Kubernetes. So a container tool like Docker will create the containers whereas Kubernetes will manage the containers. Now with this knowledge and with this information let us start our awesome journey to learn the features of Kubernetes. Hello and welcome, I am Raghav, I am a teacher and you can find all my work on my website automationstepbystep.com. In this session I am going to go very basic, start from scratch and learn the features of Kubernetes. So in this session we are going to see some features like automatic bin packing, service discovery and load balancing, storage orchestration and self-healing. Now do not worry if you have no prior knowledge on any of these features or even if you have heard these names for the first time, I am going to go from scratch and we will learn all of these in a very basic way and go up step by step. I will request you to watch this video very carefully until the end and also if required watch it over and over again so that you have a complete understanding of these features and this will form the basis for our next set of videos on Kubernetes. So let's get started with the first feature that is automatic bin packing. Let us take an example. Let us say we have five servers and each of these servers have a memory of 10 GB. Now we have a list of jobs and we need to package these jobs or these applications on these five servers or bin in the most efficient way so that we do not compromise on resources and we have the complete availability for all these applications. Now these jobs or these applications have different memory requirement so we have to take care of this packing process in the most efficient way. Now Kubernetes will help us and will take care of this process. It will take care of packaging these jobs or these containers on these servers or bins in the most efficient way. So now you can understand the process of automatic bin packing and Kubernetes will package our applications and schedule the containers based on the memory or the resources requirement and it will do this while not sacrificing on the availability of any of these applications and it will also save the resources. So this is the feature of automatic bin packing. Let us also understand what are pods and nodes in Kubernetes. We have not yet discussed about pods and nodes until now in this series and we will discuss on these in a detailed way in the coming session on the architecture of Kubernetes. But just for now let us understand in Kubernetes we do not interact with the containers directly. The containers are wrapped inside a functional unit which is called as pod. Now a pod can have a single container or multiple containers and pods are housed inside nodes. So a node can have a single pod or multiple pods. So this is the concept of pods and nodes in a very basic way. Now coming back to our automatic bin packing feature, we have the option to specify how much resources like CPU and memory will each container inside a pod will need and if we specify this the process of automatic bin packing becomes even more efficient because now the Kubernetes scheduler can make better de decisions on which node to place the pods on. So this will help in automatic bin packing. I hope this is now clear the first feature. Let us move to the second feature that is service discovery and load balancing. Now in Kubernetes we need to understand how does it organizes the containers. We have already seen a brief that Kubernetes does not run the containers directly. It wraps one or more containers into a higher level structure called pod. So containers are present inside pod. A pod can have a single container or multiple containers. And we also have a storage resource or a volume for every pod. 
and usually there is a single volume for all the containers inside the pod and every pod has a unique IP. So Kubernetes provides a unique IP to each and every pod. We can have multiple pods. The same set of functions are abstracted into sets called services. So a same a single service can be run using multiple pods and therefore you can see we have a service that can have multiple pods and this service is given a DNS name or a domain name by Kubernetes. So pods that have the same set of functions are abstracted into sets called services and Kubernetes provides unique IP to every pod and a domain name to the service. Now with this arrangement and with this system Kubernetes has a complete control over network and communication between pods and can also do the load balancing across them. So with the process of providing the unique IP and then DNS name to the service, Kubernetes can take control of network and communication and can also do a load balancing in these pods. So this was the feature of service discovery and load balancing. Let us move to the third feature that is storage orchestration. Now the containers that are running inside a pod need some way to store their data or they need some storage option or a volume. Now we can have a volume or a storage resource in every pod and usually there is a single volume for all the containers inside a pod. So usually a single volume is shared within all the containers in a pod and Kubernetes provides us a option and a choice to select the volume storage resource. So it can be your local storage or the storage on your system. It can also be a cloud storage like AWS or can even be a network storage like NFS. So all the options are available and this is the feature of storage orchestration in Kubernetes. Let us move to the next feature that is self healing. Now Kubernetes takes care of a lot of processes and monitoring for your applications. For example, if a container fails, Kubernetes will take care and restart the container. If a complete node dies, Kubernetes will replace and reschedule the containers of that node on any other available node. Now Kubernetes has a monitoring system and Kubernetes checks all the containers and if any container does not respond to this monitoring system or the user defined health check, Kubernetes will kill the container and it will take care of the availability of the application. So with all these processes, if a container fails, it will restart the container. If a node dies, it will replace the containers on other nodes. And if the container does not respond to the user defined health check, it will kill the container. All this is a feature of self healing in Kubernetes. And the process that takes care of all this in Kubernetes is called replication controller. So this is the feature of self-healing. I hope by now you have a good understanding of these features, automatic bin packing, service discovery and load balancing, storage orchestration and self-healing features of Kubernetes. In the next session, we will discuss rest of the features of Kubernetes. I hope this session was very useful for you. Thank you for watching.